Thanks for joining us. This is live with Miami's Community News and our guest today. We have two guests, Louis Aguiar. Did I get it right? Yep. Oh my goodness. Okay. And Louis Agende. Agende. Agende Ruiz. Yes. Okay. All right. That'll be the last time that I do that. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you're with, both here are with Encompass Health, mm -hmm. which until recently for us down here in, in the South, in South Florida, and particularly down here, all right, we were we're comfortable with the area of Old Cutler. That's where you're about 200th Street, 205th Street, mm -hmm. right, right. And, 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 and Old Cutler. And um, tell us a little bit about Encompass Health and what it means to the people, first of South Dade, and we'll just talk a little bit about the Sunrise location, right? Okay. So Lewis. since you're since you're really to my immediate right, Louis, okay, go ahead. Okay, so um, first of all, I want to thank you for yes. giving us the opportunity to be here. Um, Compass Health is an inpatient rehab hospital um, located on Old Court, like you mentioned. Uh, we've been around for like 30 years, right, Luis? Mm -hmm. About 30 years. We're a 60, pe 60 bed um, inpatient acute rehab hospital, and um, we specialize in um, dealing with patients um, after they've been at the acute care setting, and we receive them in our hospital, and we rehab them and get them ready to go back into the community. So, Luis, I see, Luis? Yep. Luis. Yep. So I see you're a registered nurse. I am. You, I used to be one a long time ago. I, I went to Jackson Memorial Hospital in the middle 70s. Very good. Middle 70s, was what, well, a while ago, all right? So, lots of people don't know what a rehab center is and how you wind up going there. But you mentioned, Luis, <laughs> you're in acute care, which is you're in the hospital because something happened, yep. all right? And you get stable and then they send them to the re to your rehab center. So how does that process work? How do people wind up going there and selecting that uh, your facility? The process is um, very simple and very complex at the same time. I mean, every individual that go to inpatient in any of the acute settings after being hospitalized for whatever reason and they go into weakness, disease myopathy, fractures, post-trauma, um, they will need rehab. And so uh, the social workers, other hospitals, the nurses, the physical therapists, and the physicians usually know that that individual will require post-acute hospitalization in a post-acute center or hospital for rehab. So we are preferred provider for some of them, and we have good relationship with the uh, surgeons and uh, contacts in acute hospitals. So they send us the refer, and that's how it start. So Encompass Health is all over the country. All over the country. Correct. Right. Big, right? L Correct. Louis, yes, uh, Louis. We, all right. Big country. We're, big part, we're, we're uh, one of the hospitals, one of the 140 some hospitals all over the United States. Um, the company used to be called Health South because it was in the southern part of the United States. Um, as it grew, and about, I'll say two years ago, um, about four years ago, they, um, they acquired Encompass Home Health. And they try to work with Encompass Home Health and Health South together. Um, but they decided two years ago to put everything together and call ourselves Encompass Health. So now um, we're like all over the United States. Yeah, yeah Encompass Health. All, all we're all over the United States, including also Puerto Rico, where we have two hospitals. Right. Where you used to play ball. Correct. Okay, <laughs> basketball. <Yeah. laughs> not, you know, not soccer. Right. So, Luis, so here we are, big company, a lot of, lot of people working there. How do the, the when people go to your, your the hospital on, on Old Cutler, people be, people want to know that the people that are there care about their community and care about the people that are there because most of the Absolutely. patients that go are in the area. Correct. Absolutely. So so how do you see how do you wind up and 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 getting people that are local that are qualified so that when we when we wind up going there they're going to say here's a big company but they have local management to make sure that everything's going right. First of all, the attention is personalized, and we have uh, physicians there, long history of the same physicians working over there, that they really care for the patients. Uh, we provide uh, around three hours of therapy a day per patient in a combination of physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech. And uh, the nurses and the therapists and even the administration know who our patients are, what their needs are. So it's like personalized attention, and our ultimate goal is to send those individuals back to the prior level of function, and that's mainly the goal for. 
So I just want to give some background. So you're, you're registered nurse. What is what, CRRN that's certified? It's a certification. It's a higher certification for a, a registered nurse that work in a uh, okay. rehab setting, and it's called Certified uh, Rehabilitation Registered Nurse. And then you went to, and, you, and what, MHSA? I have a master also in business administration, okay. and I am also a um, um, uh, uh, risk management uh, certified okay. license. And, and, and the tall guy over here? Oh, um, well, like you mentioned, I used to play basketball, but uh, I continued my studies, and I did a master's in human resources, and started working inside a ho the hospital setting, loved the hospital, and decided to do a master's in healthcare administration. So we know how you were much younger when you got your RN, that's how you started on that path, mm -hmm. right? So what caused you initially to say, gee, you know, I'd like to become a registered nurse? Well, the story began before that. I was 22 when I graduated from medical school. I'm a physician as a background. I, um, right after I went back to uh, the school and I uh, went into a resident program, neuros I am a neurosurgeon and I practice about uh, almost uh, 20 years before I become a nurse. Really? Yep. So did I tell you about this thing up there? <laughs> <laughs> we, is there, they do an MRI, see if there's anything in there at all. So, all right, so, so you went, you got your, your two masters. Why in the medical arena and health arena? Um, basically before, when I started going to college, I wanted to be a doctor. Um, basically because my mom, my dad, and I think four, bro four of my brothers have you got, you got a lot of brothers and sisters. Yeah, so, um, but basketball. Wait, you skipped over that part. Your mother and your father are docs, and your siblings are doctors. Correct, four of them. All right. So. And you were the lone soldier. Yeah, I'm the black sheep. Right. I <laughs> yeah, so I decided to do a master's in human resources after a bachelor in, in biology. And um, it was in my blood. I love being in a hospital. I love the setting. I love the opportunity to work with every every type of um, employee from um, from the housekeeper all the way to the neurosurgeon. So I, I love that part. So 30 years ago, I was, I was with a friend and we stopped to help somebody you know, change their tire. And so when we got done, I said, how do you feel? He said, I feel really good doing that. I said, every day I go to work, I feel that. Mm -hmm. Every day, mm -hmm. all right? Yeah. He said, what do you mean? I said, every day I work in that hospital, there's so somebody, all right, not I just help, but I help myself that if, it feels so good, so I get it that you're there and you're helping people and that are relying whether you, whether you're in patient care or you're in that connection because there's lots of opportunities everywhere within the health arena. It's interesting that you mentioned that because um, that's one of the most satisfying things about working in, in patient rehab hospitals. Um, I always tell the story that um, we receive a lot of patients after a stroke that um, for some reason due to the stroke, can't, um, one of the, they can't move one of their arms or so forth, so they have it tied to the to a wheelchair and then after one week two weeks you start seeing them saying when they leave the hospital they're saying bye-bye with a hand so that's very satisfying for us when I hear doctors oh well, you go do some rehab meanwhile I'm thinking wow what does that mean it seems they so seems to be so light-hearted sort of second second step where you really they're not saying you don't need it but they poo-pooing it right mm -hmm. not intentionally but when you hear it it just rolls off their tongue like it, like, well, just rehab, but right, but it does matter. It does matter uh, to me. Is like wrapping up the care for that patient and sending back to the correct level of function. Let's say that you go to a hospital for a hip fracture, and uh, the doctor, this brilliant uh, orthopedic surgeons, come and do a replacement of your hip, and you're ready to go. But now you're gonna go into a rehab center that really care for you to put that muscle back and that joint back to. Uh, the level of function that was before, so you can regain your independence. So there's somebody I know personally, she's over 60, and she fell on her stairs and she had a hip replacement. Mm -hmm. I guess she broke her femur and some other parts. So like four days later, they're going, okay, time to go to rehab, yep. right? And I went, what? Yeah. I go, what does that mean? She says, well, I'm, uh, I'm out of the acute care, all right? Survived, I didn't die, didn't get a blood clot or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so she went to rehab. And it had been three weeks, and I see her. You know, she's still a little stiff, but she's like walking around. Yep. You know, and if she if she had an umbrella, she'd be swatting you, and you wouldn't know that she was actually doing it for a little bit of support. But I, we watch it, and it's just, you know, it's amazing to see what rehab can do for people. And the, and it's interesting um, how fast it happens because our length of stay is um, um, only 12 days. That means that you're going to be with us 12 days, and we're going to send you back to your prior level of function. Um, and 80% of the patients we receive at our hospital go back to the community, which I think is 
very important. Um, our outcomes are very, very well recognized, not only um, in the country, but mm -hmm. in our community. And um, one thing when you were talking about how does the patient get to us, I think it's important to let um, our, our viewers know that it's their choice. Um, they might get, the doctor might say, or the hospital might say, no, you need to go here, but it's their choice where they want to go. So they, they have a right to say, I want to go to Encompass Health. So one of the things we recognize when you get into the setting where you're really not familiar, you just sort of go along with, exactly. with whatever that person mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. So the, the consumer really has to be assertive in their position and, uh, and know right, uh, ahead of time where they want to wind up. And in this arena, I hear it frequently where they say, my, my doc wanted to send me wherever it was. And I go, or, what are you going to do? Well, I don't know where else to go. Well, you can go ask somebody else. Mm -hmm. You can go look it up. You can go online Sorry. and you can find this. By the way, I pulled out a story that we did and we published in uh, April um, 2019. That was, yes, before COVID. Pre-COVID. What? Pre-COVID. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is, this is going to be like uh, before Andrew or after Andrew, mm -hmm. right? So pre-COVID, about uh, working with people that have had brain injury. Is that, that's part of what you do? Absolutely. All right. Um, so that's certainly a very traumatic event for everybody. When you have those type of patients, is it because they had a stroke or a car accident? Is there or a variety of things? It could be, it could be either or, or all of them. Uh, brain injury can be considered um, after a, a trauma but it can be after uh, a major surgery due to either cancer or uh, a stroke or cerebrovascular accident of any kind. So, so you have a lo lot of folks that have worked down there, lots of local people. How many people are working at your facility? Currently we have um, 180 some employees. Out of that facility mm -hmm. on 205th and Gold Color. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's phenomenal, mm -hmm. right? So, and Health South's been around for years and years and years, all right? And it's been a while since I was down there. And when, after you put in new landscaping, and that probably was like three or four years ago, that's how long it's been. It's like, wow, it got all dressed up. Big parking lot, yes. right? People can get in. We did a tour. Uh, and if I remember right, there were a lot of paintings. I don't know if patients that did them or whether there was donations up on the wall. Uh, but it was it was very, very nice to see that. We do success stories and yes. we put success stories on the wall. See? Yes. Real success he, stories. He, he didn't Real know patients. that because he won round back then. Yeah. Yeah. Real <laughs> patients, actually, uh, we were one of the pioneers uh, to replace art on the wall by uh, the art of rehabilitation, how we call it at the beginning. And, and that is simply um, a picture that tells a story about a great success story behind a patient and a, on, a, on, a, on a group of individuals. As, you, as, as you say that, I, I, I'm seeing it again. And, and we as consumers and patients and providers, we want, we want to hear those stories. Yeah. And most importantly is the patient that's in there, all right? Mm -hmm. Or the family that's in there wants to know. Those are right? the storytellers. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that go back to the community and say, this was my story and this is the group of individuals that helped me regain my independence. One of the things that we like to do here at Community Newspapers is, is let people tell their story yep. because that's important for the, some connection. So be before the end of the show, what I'd like you to do is, is I'd like you to talk into a camera. Which one is he on right here? Middle the middle camera. All right, you're over the age of 40, yes, I, I assume. There's some 18 to 20 year old person that's wondering about what they sh could do in their life. Mm -hmm. All right, and we're gonna ask you the same for you in a moment. Uh, so why don't you tell them about life and about the future? Well, um, look, look right in that camera because they're looking at you right now. For me, it's quite easy because I happen to have a 22-year-old son who um, coincidentally finishes school, graduates college this Saturday. Um, and I also have a 19-year-old who's a sophomore in college. So um, I've always told them that um, school is very important. You have to get an education um, because um, even though both of them are athletes, um, you can get injured and you can lose your career um, in your sport, but whatever you learn, it's always gonna be in your mind and nobody can take that away from you. Um, and I always tell them that you, you have to find what you love. Um, is it taking care of people? Is it being with people? Is it talking to people? Whatever you love doing in your life and go after it. Um, I can tell you an example with my daughter, she's going to school, she's um, in the communications um, department she wants to she's going to finish her bachelor's in communications and she told me straight out I love um, I want to be a wedding planner that's what I want to do 
And then my response was, if, if that's what you love, is that what um, motivates you, go ahead and do it. Because um, it's only one life, so you have to obviously work for what you want and go after what you want. Great. And which came right there in the, right there in the, right, which one here? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I'd say that, um, my first recommendation is do what you love. I remember being uh, a teenager and, and had that passion for medicine and that's how when I went for it. And you gotta you gotta love what you what you go for because if no you're not gonna put the passion and, and the care that need behind uh, that all uh, amount of knowledge that you're gonna regain in the school. So uh, my recommendation is just go for what your heart is telling you to do and just do it with passion. And that's the reason why we still do what we do in rehab because we we went to school for this and and, and we we love. Uh, taking care of patients and that's that's a result that we get every day in the medical arena when I was in school at Jackson Memorial Hospital in the in the 70s <coughs> there was a doc his name was Tate I remember he Charles Tate if I remember he was one of the top docs so he went and he showed us a pair of lungs and a bottle with a smoker and one that was not a smoker I remember like that was burned into my soul right that's what you do I was smoking then that's what you do to yourself when you smoke. And it was so significant for me, so here I am 40 years later, remembering that. So I was wondering, why don't we start with you, who, who in your life made such an impact on you that you can recall it today and, the, and how that helped you on your, on your journey? Oh, it's, uh, I have a couple of examples, but one that um, I can just think uh, immediately is, uh, um, I, I remember um, being uh, in, high school and one of my uh, um, uh, friends passed out in one of the meetings and I remember broken one of the the tooth and uh, taken to the hospital so full of blood and everybody just start passing and fainting and and I recall uh, just grabbing him and uh, taking him to the uh, uh, where the nurses were and uh, even helping the nurse without knowing what I was doing and that nurse says I think that you need you you're gonna be good at this so that simple action just kind of turned my uh, career path into something that um, I'm, I'm still building today. That's great. And, and any aspect of your life, whatever, wherever it was? I think it, it has to be, in it, not necessarily in the career that I chose, but um, just in life. Um, my mom, I'm the youngest son, um, so my mom had, when sh she was um, pregnant with her sixth son, daughter in this case, um, she broke up with her husband then. And with six kids, she decided, she was a teacher, she decided back then um, in the 60s, uh, I wanna study medicine after having six kids. So she got on a boat from Puerto Rico and How went to Spain. She? she was 40, I wanna say getting to 40. Okay. And she got on a boat and went to Spain um, to study medicine and lift off um, the government, which helped her, Puerto Rican government, and baking, cakes and cooking for the other students who were younger than her. And she went through medical school and came back. And um, for me, uh, if all she fought to get there, there was nothing um, hard for me to do in life. So that's why I kept going and kept going. And thank God I'm here today. Well, that's amazing. I want to share with you. Know, it's rare that we have three guys on the show. So the <laughs> testosterone's rolling today, guys. So I'm about 20 years old. My father had been in radio and TV and, and newspapers. And I graduated and said, so what do you want to do? And I said, I don't, want, I don't know what I want to do for the rest of my life. And then he looked at me and said, why don't you do whatever you want to do, do the best you can until you don't want to do it anymore, and then go do something else. And so that was 40 plus years ago. Wow. And on the wall of our building, I put that, we put that in bronze out there. And it's, it's so good when you're passionate about something. And it doesn't have to be forever. It's you be passionate until you want to do something different. Yeah, of course. Right? So, if you if you weren't in the in the medical arena, in the healthcare business, what would it have been? Oh gosh, I don't remember anybody asking me that question before. So uh, I'm We're not trying sure. to get down to I you. cannot picture myself being out of the medical field. Honestly, I uh, I've been in administration. I've been in education. Um, I've been teaching um, new nurses and new uh, medical students. But I don't picture myself out of the medical arena. 
So you were t you, when you say you were, t you were also you taught them, mm -hmm. and what uh, what was that setting? Uh, university uh, for new residents when I was a neurosurgeon, and also I've been teaching uh, nursing students. It's great. And what about you, boss? Uh, for me, it would nothing with medical um, field. <laughs> I would be a, I would be a college coach, basketball coach. There um, you go. Basketball is in me. Um, my son played college basketball. He's a pro now. And if you go to my house, all we do is talk basketball. My wife is up to here with basketball. But well, uh, Tommy over here, he's a uh, football prognosticator. He's got a 60% win rate over there. And then he's, he goes on with Andy Cord, who's a pretty good sports guy. I don't know about basketball, but the other sports. So maybe one day he can give you a buzz yeah. and he can chime in. <laughs> Uh, I know we have we have the uh, the figures on a on a on a whiteboard in the other room. I think you, he doesn't change it from week to week. All right, so we can show the people, hey, this is what we yeah. what we did last week. So I, I know that if if my wife would have let me, I would have had Noah's Ark in the backyard. We used to import uh, animals from all over the world, yeah. and I really enjoyed that. I knew that that uh, it was a pretty dangerous business, so you had to d deal with some rough and tumble guys, but. I used to get, when the kids were little, I'd go to the youth fair, i said, I want this one, I want this, I want this. But she, she held me back, all right? But one of the things we did get out of it was we started importing birds and have now been breeding exotic birds for, for 30 years. And so I was able to do both these, these things and be in business and enjoy that. Um, so if, let's get, go back to providing uh, quality medical care and rehab services uh, to people in the south end of the county. Uh, that's my perception, but where do most of your patients come from geographically for, the, for, that, for this, your campus down here? Uh, obviously, since we're located in the south area, well, the majority of the patients come from the south, but we do receive patients all the way from the Broward line all the way to Key West. Mm -hmm. uh, Baptist uh, hospitals, uh, Jackson South, uh, South Miami, those are um, referring hospitals to us, but um, we basically receive patients from everywhere. And is there a specialty that you have that, that, that you're known for? Yes, we are, we are certified by the, the, the Joint Commission, which is the, the highest um, accrediting body um, for hospitals. So we're certified in two, disease, two specific diseases, um, stroke and hip. So in, we're certified in stroke rehab and hip rehab. And we're working very hard. Um, we should be certified by next year in oncology rehab mm -hmm. um, with, the, with the opening of the Baptist um, Cancer Institute. Um, we focused um, a, le a lot of our rehab and we a lot of training and working towards getting the Joint Commission certification in oncology rehab. Uh, you got to admit that the Miami Cancer Institute is some facility. Great people over there when you're walking there. And mm -hmm. if it's fresh and they, and they have <coughs> Concierge service. Mm -hmm. I, wa I sit over there and I watch it. So they they go. This is before COVID. Patient goes in. They tag them. They have somebody that will take you from over here and take you over here mm -hmm. because people when people in their time of need, right? They get confused. They get disoriented. And even if you don't get confused or disoriented, it's like, hey, I've never been here before. Exactly. Somebody help out. Mm -hmm. So that's great that you, that you work with those uh, with, uh, with with Baptist. And, um, they are a good partner of us. Say it again. They are good partners of us. That, that's wonderful. So how how would if if a, a, a patient goes into the hospital and it's not a, a stroke, uh, and but they know they have to go to rehab, what would what would you like them to think about when they're deciding about going to a rehab place? All right, if you're if they're not if you're not on the uh, list that they remember, all right. What, is, what, what thing that you would want them to remember? This is kind of the day of day. Um, um, we call the, the bedside cell. I, even though I'm not very uh, good at, at presenting that in front of the patient as a bedside cell, but um, you, you wanna go to a five star rehabilitation hospital. This is not a vacation where you ask for a five star hotel. You ask for a five star rehabilitation hospital. And what do you need there? You need to be there the minimum time possible. You need to be taking care of our experts and what they do. And uh, you need to be conscious about what are my opportunities to go back to uh, the prior level of function and regain my independence by uh, going there and following the plan of care that these individuals have. 
uh, Encompass is well known uh, nationwide to be one of the pioneers, one of the, the best providers, and one of the, the strongest on rehabilitation services. But I'm proud to say that in Miami, we also do that. Uh, we are passionate and, and very compassionate with our patients. We follow our plan of care. We follow uh, the, the, the strict um, guidance from our physicians and the multidisciplinary uh, team that work uh, behind that individual, that patient, to provide the care. And yeah, it's important to, um, that Luis mentioned, um, it's not going to be a five-star hotel. Um, you're going to go there, and you're going to get therapy three hours a day. And yeah. we're going to make sure. And it's sure not going to hurt, but yeah. it's going to be good for you. Yeah, it's going to yep. be good for you, and, you, and we're going to get you to your prior level. 20 years ago, as you know, uh, pharmacy, uh, there was no pharmaceutical advertising on TV. It could have been a lot, it could have been more, more than that. But all of a sudden, they were dealing directly, the pharmaceutical companies were dealing directly with the con end consumer. And then the consumer would call up their doc and say, I want the blue oh, pill, I want mm -hmm. the purple pill, I want this pill. And, you know, and God forbid, you know, you, 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 all the commercials that we see, that, so it's, it's educating the buyer, the, the patient, to look at some of that stuff. And I'm sure there are plenty of people that never had what, what it was for and go yeah. in and, and ask for things. I'm sure it's all the time. Yeah, well, me and Luis always talk about that, that um, you don't think about rehab. inpatient rehab until you need it. Until you need because it. Because nobody's going around talking, oh, if, if inpatient rehab hospital, nobody knows about that. But when you need it, you have to know, um, first of all, that it's your choice where you are, where, where, where you're gonna go. That's very important. It's the patient's choice. Nobody can force you to go anywhere. You chose, you choose where you want to go, and um, you look it up. You look at the outcomes, and see. Okay, you look at who. At our hospital, we're going to have internal medicine. We're going to have um, a psychiatry with you, so you're going to have 24/7 nurses, and they're going to visit you every day. So, so you're, let's say you're a patient. You're in the hospital. You had something occurred, and then okay, we're going to discharge you now, and then and then you're going to you find out. Oh, I got to go to rehab. All right, you mentioned that it's a it's a it's Maximum 12 days? Is it usually 12 days? That is our average. length of stay, average length right. of stay, yeah. The, the thought of being in an acute care facility, right, for a week, maybe? Okay. Or are there many patients that are in a hospital for, for a week? Mm -hmm. Weeks. Weeks, right? <laughs> All right. Depending on the diagnosis. Yeah. Now with COVID, you can be in a hospital even for a month. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, maybe need to be reminded what happens when you're not really moving around. Yeah. What happens to your soul, what happens to your body and your metabolism and your muscles. Doctor, you, why don't you tell us? You want, immediately after prolonged hospitalization, you go into weakness, uh, you go into metabolic imbalance, you go into uh, inability to provide uh, the care that you need for yourself and the transfers and Im minimum things that you normally take for granted, like going to the bathroom. Um, so those are the things that uh, we don't take for granted when we go and present the patients our services, and uh, this is what we're there for. So in, in as far as trying to reach your, your market, the people, mm -hmm. so you have a couple places. You have the people in the health business w where they're the ones that are talking, they're familiar with it, and then you have uh, the patient's family. But by the time that gets to the patient's family, all right, they're already on their way. So you must you must be talking to a lot of the healthcare facilities and showing them the about the qualifications of your facility. Through you know our extensive relationship with the uh, outside community um, uh, companies that work with us, we've been providing them outcomes of our prior patients and establishing relationship. Our physicians out there in the community know who we are. We have a very solid name. Uh, we have a very good reputation. We have excellent outcomes, and, and that's what we present. We don't present anything else. We we are encompassed. We are an inpatient acute rehab institution that provide care for these patients. This is what we've done historically uh, with our patients. This is our length of stay. This is the return and investment by going to encompass, um, not only from the financial standpoint but also from the, the medical standpoint. And uh, uh, like Luis was mentioning before, one of m the biggest hit is uh, over 80% of our patients go back to the community, meaning they're gonna go back home with the families. Uh, f they're, gonna, uh, they're gonna go back to where they were before this event in their life occurred. Yeah. So w we do a lot of shows with physicians. As a matter of fact, uh, tell me, what, we have a show on with Dr. Martinez? 
Uh, Anthony Gonzalez. Anthony I'm Gonzalez, sorry. The Martin. surgeon. All right. Sorry. All right. And uh, he usually brings in other physicians. All right. And uh, I know that, that November, which just passed, was uh, diabetes month. Mm -hmm. So we had a couple d uh, docs talk about diabetes, which I didn't realize how prevalent that was. All right. And uh, it was astonishing. We had uh, Robert um, Aiden mm -hmm. on, on Sunset Drive, 95th. And he told me, more or less, it seemed like about 10% of the population has it. And correct me if I'm wrong, another 10 or 15% are, are, are pre-diabetes. Pre right? mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I said, that's a quarter of the people. Yeah, it is. I know I'm in that quarter, all right? Yeah. Other people are, are too, but, but it's an astonishing thing about awareness of that and the kind of problems that can occur. Do you get diabetes patients? Of course, yeah, yes. Of course, we, yes. We have hypertension, diabetes, cancer patients, uh, individuals could go with hydration, uh, gastroenteritis, and um, I mean, we mentioned it all. Um, a couple of years ago, we were just talking about rehabilitation, and you will only think about the stroke, the hip fracture, the spinal cord injury, and all of that. As uh, the rehabilitation got more complex and more, uh, I would say, more technology is, add, is, is being added to uh, the process, um, more complex kind of patients are coming to inpatient at Give Rehab. Uh, acute hospitals are reducing the length of stay by only providing care for those patients in acute care hospital for uh, those uh, procedures that need to be done. But then the rehabilitation is given to us. So those individuals are coming to us two, three days after the surgery, sometimes just the day after the okay. surgery. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. So we are getting a more complex patient in our hospital our nurses and physicians are used treating to, them. It used to get a little bit more stable. Yes. The other. It used to, uh, used to, not anymore. So as they reduce the length of stay, they are, they are sending those individuals more complex, kind of uh, medically complex to us. We are preparing those individuals to go to the community while we are rehabilitate, rehabilitating them. And so it's important to note that um, as this change has been going on, our hospital has been preparing, and we've continued to um, recruit more and more specialists. So. If you go to our hospital, you're going to be seen every day by internal medicine and by a, a, a PMNR, which is a physiatrist. But also, in, in our staff, we have pulmonologists, we have neurologists, we have cardiologists, and all of those people are, are consulted, and if the internal medicine believes that he, she needs, that this patient needs a cardi cardiologist, she will put a consult, and the cardiologist will come in and see you. So I have a friend who has been in, uh, uh, running a psychiatric hospital. He He's been doing it for his entire life. So we were talking about 10 years ago. I said, Michael, it used to be 90 days. They could come in for 90 days. He said, then it was back to 75. Mm -hmm. Then it was 60. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the last time was 30. And then I think, I haven't spoken to him mm -hmm. in a while about it, but it's like this very short span, which in and of itself we know doesn't work. That's just the beginning part, because if you don't have the follow-up, if you don't have the rehab exactly. and getting into mm -hmm. a facility, all right, and getting, or, uh, getting the, the treatment, the support, we know what's gonna happen. So let's say somebody gets out of their, their on average for 12 days and they need some continuing help, but they're not, they're not able, they're, they, but they shouldn't be in a facility, mm -hmm. right? What's, what's the next step for them? Same way that the QK hospital have a, a continuation of a pl the plan of care with preferred providers, and we are one of them. We also have our own preferred providers, so we, like, like I said, there is about 80% of our patients that go back home, but sometimes they need home health at home mm -hmm. to continue that rehabilitation. We have some companies that we work with. Uh, we provide a list of the companies that we work with to the patients, and uh, by patient choice, they decided where or who they want to work with and, 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 and continue the care for them. Sometimes it's necessary to send one of our patients to a skilled nursing facility because they, even though the, they came to us and they get better, but not ready to go back home and regain independence. So, so one, of, one of the things we do, um, like when they're discharged and we, we send them home with home health, it doesn't mean that we're gonna f forget about you. You're gonna receive a call from us four days later, make sure that everything's in place, mm -hmm. and that home health was there, and that home health came, and you're doing okay. So, so we do follow up with the patients. And, and that's pretty important, I mean, I, because I, years, the, my job after school was doing home health care. Mm -hmm. So I'd get right out of the hospital and they'd be at home. And then I realized, so they're at home, they're not getting what they need. You could just see that plain as day. So I know that your home health people, you know, share with you 
all right, hey, here's what's going on at their house. Mm -hmm. They have nobody to help them, you know, that he can't get around, or he's diabetic and he's gonna lose his foot or whatever it happens to be. And so that follow-up care is pretty important. And, and um, so, so if, we, if somebody doesn't have a family member, all right, is that, does that happen? <laughs> Every day. Every day. Yeah, well, we do have a, 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 a group of case managers in our hospital. Um, it's a group of five. Um, they're all nurses or case managers or social workers. And before we discharge the patient, we got to make sure it's a safe discharge. So if they don't have a family member, we, we, f we won't discharge you home and leave you at home. Yeah, we, we can't do that. We're going to make sure that either you go to an ALF or you go somewhere where you're going to be safe. And we make, and they're the ones that make sure that when you get home, home health is already assigned. And, and at, th at that point, they're pretty scared. They're thinking, how, how am I going to get around? How am I going to be able to move? Absolutely. How am I going to get get mm -hmm. something to eat? All right. So, uh, pretty scary for some uh, some folks to so be able to do. If that. you go to our hospital, um, we have what we call an ADL room with it, which is daily activity daily room ad activities. Of daily living. Daily living. We're, Doc, yeah. we're going to teach you. Activities right? of daily Activities living of room. Daily living room um, which, and it, it's like an apartment. So yeah. there we show you how to get off, get, get into bed, get out of bed. How do you get up? How do you pick? There's a small kitchen. There's a small closet. So we get you ready. So w when you get home. Yeah. So I was having a dizzy problem a couple months ago. And I said, oh, sh I must be having a stroke. Run over and no, Mr. Miller, you're not. Blah, blah, blah. Okay get an MRI, no, it's you're all good. I said, I'm still dizzy. All right, we don't know. It was like, you, we want to do some more tests for you. I said, oh my God, I can't believe it. And it wasn't dizzy all the time. And it wasn't necessarily when I got up. I go to my GP, she, she says, describe to me when it occurs. She says, oh, you have postural vertigo. You need to go to the ENT guy. The ENT doc listens, he does his stuff. He says, this is what you have. He's, here's the printout. You get it online. This is the exercise I want you to do, which was lean like this, lay down, all right? He says a little, correct me if I'm wrong, a little calcium deposits mm -hmm. are in the wrong place. When, as soon as I did that, honest God, I thought that I heard this air, this drainage occurred instantly. Interesting enough that it had a cough for months. It wouldn't produce anything. But all the way along the line, no one asked me specifically when it happened. And it would have been, when I turn my head this way, no, they didn't ask, right? So all those things, Doc, are, yeah. are important to, because- Small one, questions. Yes, sir. Make big differences. Big difference. Mm -hmm. Here I am, I'm so excited. I said, this is a treatment, here yeah. it is. I, no surgery, no, no, just go do this. Absolutely. And, and it's amazing, just by a couple questions, whether it's your home health care, or your discharge nurses, if there's somebody to, to help, uh, help them. Um, what else would you like to talk about today? Um, just wanted to jump. Yeah. I just want to make sure that uh, the audience know that, uh, again, we are an inpatient acute rehab hospital. And for that, we have the opportunity to admit any patient in rehab need, either it come from a hospital or is coming from home. And I just want to pick it back on what something you were mentioning when uh, we were talking about home health. You said that the nurse is going to go home and it's going to review that individual at home and it's gonna determine whether that individual is safe to be home alone or not, well, that nurse can call us and we will be able to send one of our nurses over there, do an assessment and bring that indi individual from home to our hospital, make him stronger, guide him in how to be safe and go around, and that individual most likely will be able to come back home alone because it's gonna be safe after the rehab. We also have a great relationship with the emergency rooms we, um, and they see a lot of patients go to the emergency room they're not candidate to be admitted, but they send them home and they come back and they're freaking flyers. So we they know that we're gonna send you to Encompass Health. You're gonna be there 12 days and you won't be back in the ER. Yeah, I think it's important for our, for our viewers to, to know that if you're asked to check in on somebody, you need to go do that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. A f friend of mine from, who is a professor's wife when I was in school, she's 80 something, Michael, could you come help me? So I go over there. She had just gotten out of the hospital the day before. Her house was like a hoarder house. She could barely walk in between. She had a hip problem. She wanted me to help her put on this suit that w of stuff that was gonna help her with her blood. And I said, no, 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 no. I said, give me your son's phone number. 
well, he won't come over. I said, where is he? Keys. I called him up. I've known this. Now he's 45 mm -hmm. since, I, since he was a little kid. Your mother needs help. No, she doesn't. I said, I'm sitting with her right now. She needs your help, all right? She's mm -hmm. going to fall in this house, all right? And I'm not, do, I'm not putting that thing on it because I don't know what the hell it is, all right? Mm -hmm. And you have to speak up yep. when that happens. Absolutely. I also want to share with you, somebody says, this is about five years ago, Michael, would you help the neighbor uh, feed their dogs that are out of town? I go there, and it was a hoarder house, and they had dozens of dogs, dozens of cats. I just called fire rescue, called everybody. They went and they took all the dogs, all the cats, the people weren't there. I'm not talking about trash this high, you had to stop through the house. So when, when, when people say, check on my mother, my grandmother, or uh, that you have to do that, you just can't ignore it because you never know what, what's gonna be there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Lewis and Lewis, thank you so much. No, thank you. Compass thank Health, 205th Street and uh, Old Cutler. 206 right? Old Cutler can, Road. Right, and Old Cutler Road. You can look them up and, and big company, local, local concern, local people, and, and we appreciate that you're here to take care of us. And fortunately, I haven't needed rehab yet, all right? But you never know. That's a good yes. thing, but right? it's a good thing that you now know. That yes. If you need it, we're going to be there. Yes, okay, terrific. Thank you. And, thank you for your opportunity. Yes. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you for uh, joining us today. Again, this is Live with Miami's Community News. I want to thank you uh, for joining us. And Tommy, thank you for producing the show. Folks, have a great day.